I started experimenting with music when I was in about sixth or seventh grade. My mother was a nurse, and I used to beg her to bring me home the biohazard stickers. At that same moment, I was very uh, much into the Chemical Brothers, so I would put a sticker on each of the, you know, the, the CD cases, and, and I would play these Chemical Brothers CDs, and with the other cassette recorder, I literally banged on pots and pans, adding like extra percussion over, you know, block rock and beats. You know, like. <laughs> And I had this, you know, department store keyboard and I would kind of just riff over the top of Chemical Brothers songs <laughs> and record them and I called them my biohazardous beats. That was my first uh, kind of foray into uh, making music. Hi, I'm Seth Haley and I'm also known as Count Trues. I like to call my music mid-fi synthwave slow motion funk. But to simplify it, let's call it down-tempo electronic music. For the most part with my music, I'm trying to tell these interesting narratives that I create in my mind. It's like making a movie, but just with the sound. I would say I'm a computer nerd. I fell in love with the computers and I loved music before that. And then when I realized you could use computers to make music, it was like inseparable. You know, the first tools with making music, I believe using Hammerhead Rhythm Station, which was basically just kind of a freeware drum machine. You know, it had the Amen break and, and lots of lots of vintage drum, uh, you know, breaks in it. Actually, uh, I remember early on, I used to use Sonic Foundry Acid. I remember I used to ask for my birthday and things like that for these loop CDs and you'd get this, you know, and it would just be full of drum tracks and bass lines and I would just build stuff that way. It didn't take very long before I realized that I want to be a DJ. I begged and begged and begged. I remember for one Christmas, I finally got a set of new Mark turntables and a mixer and I had two records. So for a very, very long time, I mixed those four sides back and forth into each other. I could mix those records still today. I think that's what really made me try to think about this as, you know, as more than a hobby, as something that I would like to really, you know, focus on. I started a little, to do an online radio show, just kind of being involved in that scene and really getting into the forums like Dogs on Acid and things like that. It really sparked my interest in writing my own music to DJ on my radio show. So that's what I did. I um, was working in advertising and I had a, a, a close friend that I worked with and he was always trying to push the 80s on me. He was like, you gotta check out these tracks, all this synth pop stuff. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And I finally did. And I was like, yeah, you know, I've heard some of these before, you know, I grew up with some of it. When I actually started to listen and focus on it, it wasn't so much the music itself or the songs. It was the sounds contained within the songs is really what I fell in love with. I remember hearing a drum sound and being like, I want to make something with that drum sound. And then that just kind of, I really just went from there and, and I just wanted to get my hands on anything that I could to create sounds in that same way. I think the main thing that separates me from some of my peers is that I didn't necessarily want to sound like I was writing 80s music. I wanted to take the technology used in you know that decade and even some technology from, from earlier decades and try to make something new with it. Use familiar sounds, but make them just different enough to sound new. I was pretty happy working in advertising. I was making great money, and um, my parents were very proud of just that, you know. And then when I started to write this Come True stuff, I kind of put some stuff online, and it literally just took off. I remember sitting in the office in my cubicle uh, one day. I got a message from one of my favorite artists, uh, who, uh, you know, who was uh, known as Neon Indian. I really, really, uh, you know, loved his music, and it was, you know, they were asking for a remix, and I was like blown away. And in a very short period of time, I, um, you know, I had to give up advertising. And I remember the conversation with my parents. They were pretty angry with me. And it took them a long time to be comfortable with my career choice. Um, I think 
uh, it wasn't until they came down to to uh, Manhattan and I had a sold out show at the Bowery Ballroom. I think that was the one that kind of put them at ease, and you know they approved of it, and that was huge for me. But you know, and not everyone has that, and I, I, I don't take that moment for granted at all. I think one of my my proudest moments was you know getting my music uh, pressed to a vinyl record. Early on in this this project, that was really my only goal: put out a vinyl. Uh, Cyanide Sisters. When I first, I remember getting it in the mail, you know, from the label from Ghostly, and I was just like, "This is incredible! I can't believe I get to physically hold my music. It's tangible. People are gonna buy it. Like that's insane, you know." And it's still insane to me today. I try to remember that feeling as much as possible whenever writing. And, and every time a vinyl comes out, it's it's I get that same feeling. It's just like, how how do I? I'm so lucky to have the opportunity to do this and have the support from so many people. I hope that people find this inspirational in their own way, seeing how I work um, and my, my, my processes. As artists, we struggle with many things, and at least myself, I struggle with giving myself deadlines and things like that and, and finishing things. Uh, you know, I think we also struggle with overcomplication, um, not feeling that something is adequate when it is perfectly fine to keep it simple. And I'm, I'm hoping to kind of uh, convey that I am actively, all of the time, trying to keep things simple. We practice. You know, you can really uh, kind of hone that skill and, and uh, that coupled with just kind of giving yourself realistic but deadlines is a very important part of, of my process. Music for me is all about experimentation. I like to think of it as a blank canvas, obviously. As structured as I try to make this, you know, my music seem, it's 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 kind of the the beauty and the chaos of it that it really keeps me inspired, and and the fact that there is no necessarily right or wrong. I have my specific processes that you'll see. You know, it's still a blank canvas. You know, art is interpretable, however you really want to interpret it. Thank you.